Podcast. All Hit Radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. Welcome back, everyone. This is the Exxon. My name is Rob McConnell. We're coming to you from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, and around the world on the Exxon Broadcast Network and our growing family of broadcast radio stations, TV stations, and satellite programming providers. www.exxonradiotv.com is the website on all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV. And if you'd like to send an email... Exxon at exxonradiotv.com. My guest this hour is a gentleman I've had the pleasure of speaking to a number of times. Kevin Randall is our guest this hour. He is a retired U.S. Army lieutenant colonel who's tour, toured in Iraq. He has a master degree in psychology and the art of military science, as well as a doctorate in psychology. His Army and Air Force training as an intelligence officer, military policeman, And in the public affairs brings a unique insight into the operations and protocols of the military and its investigations into UFOs and related phenomenon. He has interviewed hundreds of witnesses to mysterious crashes, sightings, abduction cases, animal mutilation cases, alien home invasions, and humans working with aliens. Joining me now to talk about his new book, which is a must for everyone who's interested in UFOs, His new book is entitled The Government UFO Files, The Conspiracy of Cover-Up. Joining me now is Kevin Randall. And Kevin, always great having you with us. Congratulations on a great book. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here, too, by the way. Well, thanks, bud. Um, What was the inspiration for writing this, and what number book is this now? Uh, If you count all the books I've written, and I don't know, 115, 116, somewhere in there. My Lord. uh, well, there's science fiction in there. There's action adventure. There's a. I, I think between Brad Steiger and me, we argue about. We, we're not sure who is who's written the most UFO books, but it's either Brad Steiger or me. And I may have just passed him. I don't know. The UFO phenomenon is it is it gaining strength? Are there more sightings being reported? Are you hearing of more? Uh, whatever happened to the alien abductions? We don't seem to hear about them anymore. Or am I just listening to the wrong channels? Well, boy, that's a multi-part uh, question there. Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, I, I think there's there's the same number of sightings. Mm-hmm. I, I think that uh, Peter Davenport is reporting from his uh, his center that he gets about the same number of UFO reports that he's got, or maybe up slightly. I think we, the whole phenomenon has been very cyclic, starting. Uh, well, they used to say starting in 1947, but mm-hmm. but in in the new book, I actually take the the beginning of the modern age back into World War II with the with the Foo Fighters. I think that's really where it began, but it but it has been cyclic uh, over the years, and and we peaked out in 1997 with the big Roswell hoopla, and then things dropped off. But it's been 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 picking up in the last few years, so I think what we're seeing is more of it coming about, um, and I think I, I know at least. At least what I've been doing and some of the others that I know of have been doing is looking back into the past and seeing how everything relates together. Uh, Nick Pope just did a big book on the rentals from Forest using, we're talking to uh, John Burroughs and mm-hmm. uh, Jim Penniston, who were, who were deeply involved in that, uh, which is an older case. But what, what we see by looking at these older cases like that, or the Roswell case, is we, we, we see the beginnings of the cover-up and we can see how it has sort of evolved over, over, the, uh, over the years. And, and in, in the government UFO files, what I discovered was that uh, the U.S. government was, of course, very interested in the Foo Fighters during World War II because they thought it might be an enemy weapon. They didn't know if, uh, in, in the uh, uh, European theater, they didn't know if it was German. In the Pacific theater, they didn't know if it was Japanese. But there was a guy who was involved in the vis- investigations, uh, Howard McCoy, a, a, an intelligence colonel. When you move a year or two into the future from that point, you get to the ghost rockets in, in uh, Scandinavia and then over in northern Europe in 1946, 
and the U.S. government showed an awful lot of interest in that, and the guy who was at the forefront of that investigation was Howard McCoy. And then you learn in 19, at the end of 1946, Howard McCoy is given an assignment to investigate the beginnings of the flying disc reports, the flying saucer reports in this country, and he set up a, a small investigation in one room where very few people had access. And what, after, after the Arnold sighting in June of 1947, suddenly what had been his sort of unofficial clandestine investigation evolved into Project Sign, but it's Howard McCoy involved in that. And when you get to the letter that sets up Sign, written in September of 1947, allegedly by Nathan Twining, who was the commander of the Air Material Command, what you find out is Howard McCoy is responsible for drafting that letter. So we go from World War Two, and mm -hmm. we've got the same guy involved in all of it, and we see that the information he gathered about the ghost rockets mysteriously has disappeared from the official investigations. And we see that the information that he gathered prior to the beginning of the official investigation, during his unofficial investigation, that information has pretty well disappeared. And by looking at some of the documentation that we get out of uh, sign, uh, Kevin, we're going to have to take a commercial break. Please stand by. Explanation. Kevin Randall's our special guest. We're talking about Kevin's new book, The Government UFO Files. We'll be back. Don't go away. Modern Esoteric, Beyond Our Senses by Brad Olson, consummates the lifeology story about where humanity originates. It is the lost continents, the primitive wisdom, the mythos of creation, and the rethinking of ancient history as we are taught in academia. There is much more to the story than what we have been told. As this is the first book in the Esoteric series, Modern Esoteric starts at the beginning of time and accelerates up to this modern age. Future Esoteric is book two in the series and takes a forward-looking position ahead of today with an open and honest examination of the ET issue and various unexplained phenomena. To discover the writings of author Brad Olson, visit www.bradolson.com. That's www.bradolson.com. Named one of the world's greatest psychics, Elizabeth Joyce is now giving readings worldwide via Skype. Elizabeth Joyce is recognized for her clairvoyant ability to help find missing persons, her analysis of dreams, past life regression work, mediumship, and her accurate predictions. Elizabeth has been a frequent guest on the Exxon radio show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, now for several years. For an appointment with Elizabeth Joyce, call 201-934-8986 or Skype at elizabeth.joyce. And for more information, you can always visit Elizabeth Joyce online at www.new-visions.com. Do you have a disease that you would like to alleviate through a natural means? Have you been contacted by angels, ghosts, or even extraterrestrials and want to validate these experiences? Or would you simply like to speak with someone who can help you find your life's purpose? I'm Dr. Joseph Mara, and I'm offering my services free of charge for first-time clients contacting me during the month of April. These free consultations include angel card readings, guided meditations, life coaching, and energy healing. If you have always wanted to explore these types of experiences but were skeptical or simply could not afford them, then take advantage of this free special offer. Contact me through my website, aguidinglight, spelled L-I-T-E, dot com, to schedule your consultation today. Until then, I offer you love, light, and laughter. Factor fiction, conspiracy or coincidence, 
theory or threat? Is there a menace or is it benign? The government's search for alien life continues unabated, but conspiracy theories on what they've already uncovered but kept hidden from the public run just as rampant. What does the government know that they might not be telling us? Well, Kevin Randall, who is well-known and well-respected within the UFO community, as well as in the media, has written another book, 115 or 116th, he's not sure. It's entitled The Government UFO Files, The Conspiracy of Cover-Up. And um, if you'd like more information on Kevin, just go to your, your favorite search engine, type in his name, and all the information and contact information is right there. Kevin, great having you with us again, my friend. I'm sorry I had to cut you off, but you know how these Not commercials are. So if you'd like to continue, go right ahead, my friend. Well, the, the, point, the point simply was we, we get this one guy mm-hmm. who, who starts with World War II with the Foo Fighters, and we, we draw a line, and he's involved in the UFO investigations up through the 1940s and into the 1950s. And we see that some of the things that he'd gathered uh, prior to the beginning of the official investigations, that stuff disappears from the Project Blue Book files. And when you look at the index the uh, ghost rocket material isn't there. The Foo Fighter stuff isn't there. And they've been gathering flying disc material or flying saucer material from the United States up to the Kenneth Arnold sighting. And that stuff really isn't there either. But when you get to the final report on Project Grudge, there's references to it. So you know it was there at one time. So what this proves beyond a shadow of a doubt, of course, is that there was been an ongoing investigation and they've hidden part of it. They've, they've, they've hidden that away so we can't get at it and we don't understand what is going on. Something I don't understand, Kevin, and maybe you can shed some light onto it. With all the information that has been released without the government's consent, and I'm, I'm thinking about the WikiLeaks as well as Edward Snowden, there has been yet no mention of UFOs, ETs, government conspiracies to suppress any information pertaining to UFOs and little green men from outer space. How come? I think because the information is compartmentalized, easy right. for me to say. Uh, and, and, I, and, and, and Snowden and the WikiLeaks people weren't looking for that material. They were looking for other stuff. And so uh, unless he knew the specific code words, unless he mm-hmm. knew how to get the specific things, he wouldn't have seen that. He was looking for other, other materials. He wasn't looking for UFO-related materials. But we can demonstrate um, through the documentation that's available that things have been hidden away. Uh, take Project Moondust, which, of course, I explain in, explain in my book about that. Uh, here was a UFO investigation. It, it, it actually transcended UFOs. Uh, it was more broad-based than that. Mm-hmm. But, but here, was, here was something that, that we knew nothing about. The Air Force said, well, we don't investigate UFOs, and we stopped in 1969, and yet Moondust goes up through 1985. And once that code name was compromised, they change the code name and they continue on. And when they're, when they're queried on this stuff through FOIA, they say the Air Force is telling a, a United States senator, uh, there's no such thing as Project Mo- Bo- Boondust. It never, never existed. We've got documents from the State Department that reference it. So hmm. clearly it existed. And when those documents were given the Air Force, they said, we'd like to amend our last statement. Uh, it existed. We just never used it. We've got documents that prove that that's not true. So we can demonstrate that there has been a conspiracy to cover this materials up. Uh, and, and Moondust proves it, and, and some of their answers to questions prove that repeatedly. And this can be documented by anybody who wants to file a FOIA request. It's not, you know, well, I've got these secret doc- documents, and there's mm-hmm. nothing you can do about it. You can go and FOIA the State Department or FOIA the Air Force or any of these other people and get those same documents. In your opinion, what is the smoking gun, if there is one, to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt aliens are here, they're working with people, the government knows about it, and the public is being duped? I'm not sure the aliens are working with people, but I think that we can prove that the the aliens are here by a preponderance of the evidence and the documentation Mm -hmm. that we have been able to recover through FOIA. We don't have to make guesses, and we don't have to... Uh, talk to secret sources, you know, unnamed sources. And, and I tried to avoid any of that kind of stuff in the book, but provide the information of where this information came from, how we obtained it, and how you can confirm it. Uh, 